Red Stag Timber, proud to bring you this episode of the Red Stag Timber Hunters Club. For this special summer series episode, we've loaded up the Stabie and pointed the Amarok North for the 2017 New Zealand Spearfishing Championships, being held in Fifi, situated amongst the bountiful waters of the Kari Kari Peninsula. Compared to recreational spearfishing, competition spearfishing is an entirely different proposition, involving pairs of divers seeking a wide variety of fish species within designated boundaries. Whilst the sport enjoys a rich history here in New Zealand, Jackson it's also a somewhat dark history, with a handful of deaths over the years. So these days, uh, safety Dwayne is at the Julian. forefront of all competitors. There's not a hell of a lot you can do in the water, apart from just keep his face up. Because when he breathes in, if he breathes in the water, he'll probably die. Tag should be pointing out that way, so a right-hander reaches around like that and goes. So if your weight belt's set up wrong, then sort it out or you die. When I was diving with Jeff Cooks and he said to me, mate, if you see me on the bottom, you can't get me, just go down and shoot me in the leg and pull me to the surface. Because what happens is you start to panic, you go down, you see him, and he's not right, so that means you push yourself harder than you used to. Time goes past and you're stressing, boof two people died. I think we've heard about that at uh, Great Barrier a year ago. So just go down, shoot them in the leg, get to the surface, relax and pull them up. Well it's an old sport and as time's gone on the guys are diving deeper and deeper as fish get harder to find and we cut down on the numbers of fish we're shooting. So it's brought into an element of very very long dives, very deep dives and unfortunately some deaths. So we've had to change the format of the competition and with it, uh, many years ago it turned into a pairs competition. So one up, one down, your mates are down, you're above waiting for him to surface and if he doesn't surface, you're on the spot to follow his float line down that's attached to the end of his gun and save his life. But it's not just the introduction of a pairs structure that's changed over the years, as this amazing archival footage from 1962 will attest. The water is warm and calm as the 64 competitors and 20 umpires set off for Redhead in the Bay of Islands for the first New Zealand underwater fishing championships. And there's the gun. For the next four hours, the 21 teams will comb the subtropical waters for fish, fish and more fish. Fast swimmers like Kingfish and Kawai count the most. This huge ray, speared by airs of Canterbury, was the biggest catch of the day, but not worth many points per pound as it's a slow swimmer. Top New Zealand team for 1962 is Rotorua. The species list over the years has changed and we're constantly looking at what fish we should be shooting in each area, what is sustainable, and the list changes from area to area to what it suits. Another surprise to many uninitiated is the fact that the competition isn't about who can shoot the biggest fish. It rewards those that can shoot the greatest variety of fish. I right, swear, so well, most people would probably think that uh, a spearfishing competition is all about shooting the biggest and the best fish, but um, you kind of want to target your variety of species, you know, you're not just going for your biggest snapper and your, your biggest kingfish. So for this competition, we've got species such as like, like blue mau mau, which are fairly common. Um, they're pretty easy to shoot. You've got your kahawai, the, uh, the old Kiwi classic. On the fish list this year, there's golden snapper. Well, I don't like our chances. These are, these are known to be quite a deep fish, 30 metres plus. It's not going to come up and check you out, you've got to find this fish. Yeah, we've got species such as, as your butterfish as well, which is a beautiful eating fish and relatively easy to shoot, you know, you find them cruising around in the kelp. I think they're on the list this year. Is the Kauru? Kauru. Kingfish, um, one of those fish that are easy to shoot but at the same time have the challenges as well. You can't go in under guns, you've got to have, you've got to have the right gear to target these species and they've got to be a species that's taken seriously. If you get caught up in the gear with the kingy, um, yeah, you can have a pretty bad time. The way that this competition works is there's a weight limit for eight kilos. Um, so, you know, an eight kilo fish is going to be the same points as a, as a 30 kilo fish. So, you know, you're, you're probably going to want to aim for that, that, that eight kilo, 10 kilo mark because um, you wouldn't want to be dragging around extra, what, 20, 22 kilos. <laughs> for six hours. For six hours. Yeah. yeah. So, boarfish uh, is definitely on almost on every Sparrow's hit list. A beautiful eating fish, again, and uh, seasonal. So, you quite often get them in the warmer months. The red mullet or, or goatfish, apparently they're quite good eating. Uh, you can quite often find them on like the sandy sort of bottoms. Snapper, really easily caught on a rod. Well, for gun, a lot harder. So in saying that, my partner here, last year shot a, what was it, 26 pound? Yeah, 11.8 so, kilo with the guts and gills in. So no pressure, dude, but uh, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think I'll be topping that one. I don't think I'll be the topping that one at all. <laughs> uh, Trevelli's another species on the list. It's one of those species you can find either on the weed line or, uh, or out wide out with the current line and stuff like that. So the John Dory, another weed line fish. 
and what they'll do is they'll, they'll see you coming, they won't, they'll be a bit unsure, but, but because it's such a flat, small fish, is they'll start swimming away and you haven't got a shot because they just, you know, they're so thin and they just take off and they, they just look back and you've got to wait for them to sort of spin back around at just enough of an angle to get a shot, reach your gun out, not easy to shoot. Pink Mau Mau's got to be one of my favourite species on the list. They're found quite often a little deeper, but they are absolutely beautiful to see and they're beautiful to eat. One of my favourite eating fish, hands down. Uh, so the scorpion fish, or granddaddy harpocker, sometimes called the poor man's crayfish, sit still, camouflage, suck up fish as they swim past, so we'll be looking in cracks and all that sort of stuff and hopefully come across a couple of them. Again, another fish you've got to really hunt for. Um, I think it's relatively new to the list. I don't think it was on the Nationals list last year. So we're going to have to do a lot of searching around, getting under cracks, putting our heads in holes where who knows what's up the back of them. Poor eye, kind of like the Labradors of the yeah. sea. So they're on the list this year and uh, they're quite often quite dopey fish. Terakihi also on the list. Not common up here. Pretty excited to see that, um, that Blue Moku is on the list this year. Awesome eating fish. Also on the list um, uh, as a team, you guys, that you're allowed one game fish species, um, which is like your marlin, tuna, I think even harpooker is including that on that list. Back in the 90s, there was actually a stripey shot in the competition. That big marlin, only eight, eight kilos of it is going to count. It's only going to count the point, so it's 100. So if you want to target that fish the whole day, I mean, it'd be pretty cool, the boys would be stoked, but it's not going to win you the competition. So here we are at the uh, 2017 Spearfishing Nationals up Cape Kerry Kerry. The weather's looking uh, really good. Top side, the, uh, the visibility underneath may be a little bit lower than expected, but it, um, it creates a pretty even playing field for everyone. It's a pretty big area today, so um, the competitors are going to have a lot of swimming to do. So I hope they all have their wheat picks. Uh, some areas, parts of the competition zone, are going to hold fish. Some aren't. You know, so it's a, it's a big call about where you start swimming to and where you start your day, and the fish you're going to target. Oh yeah, amping, ready to go. Woo. Who's going to the island? Along with well-developed fish scents, the other critical factor for success is fitness, as competitors are often required to swim massive distances and to swim those distances fast. I'm Jeff Crawford, national champion in uh, 2014. And I suppose the swimming and the athleticness is huge now. We're swimming up to 8 k's at least. Well, the hardest thing is you're racing another pair and you're in front. You see a fish, you've got to be able to just dive and shoot it. You might be power swimming for an hour and then have to dive straight to 20 metres. And that takes a huge amount of training. Normally you've got about five minutes before everybody else arrives. And that's a critical five minutes to get the fish that you race for. And then everything spooks away. So you want to get there first, because quite often first in, best rest. Reigning national champs Dwayne Herbert and Julian Hansford have made a solid start, being one of the first pairs to reach the deeper drop-off at the eastern edge of the competition zone. Uh, so the boys out here have had a good couple of k swim to get to this uh, uh, area of the competition zone. It's, um, it's pretty surgy, but by the looks of it, they have the target the pelagics here, Trevally's, Kawai's, Kowie's a kingfish, so it's a bit of a race to see who can be the first to get here get your fish and then they'll uh, start working their way back in, targeting their reef species and uh, uh, the fish on the list. Although it's a bit surgy, it's not, it's not too bad really. It's pretty good conditions for, for diving, so um, hope the boys are catching some fish and getting amongst it. Dwayne and Julian seem to be steadily accumulating fish as the morning wears on, whilst a few other pairs, including Nat Davey and James Young, also look to be doing well. But as alluded earlier, it's not the big fish that win the comps, it's the hard to reach ones. Okay, so we've got Dwayne and Julian behind us. They're diving a uh, pinnacle in the current here. And what they've shot off the top of it so far are pink mau mau. And what I believe they're doing is uh, now heading into the upcurrent side of the pinnacle because often where you find a deep pin with pink mau mau on the top, you can find golden snapper tucked right up underneath. So it's uh, fairly deep here. But hopefully they find a couple and uh, get a couple more points on the board. Really the top of the pin I believe is 20 metres and they'll be looking anywhere between 30 and, and 35 metres for those golden snapper. So they're, they're a deep fish here in the North Island. Still on the rock. 
As all tournament divers know, it's not your uh, your glamour fish that are going to win your competition. It's about getting your basics first, so getting your butters and your your blue mau mau and your poor eye, and then uh, your oddball fish, your golden snapper, your um, red cod, and even game fish like we saw the skippies before. But those are the ones that are going to win your competition. Targeting a tuna is a bit of a roll of the dice. You pretty much have to hope that the fast swimming school of bait fish that they're chasing decides to swim towards you rather than expending all your energy and hope of catching up to them. So the biz is pretty hard work? Yeah, push and tide. How have you got on? Got our car wire in Trevelli. Small kingy, couple of snapper. Yeah. Still in sort of goldie. Oh nice. What are you going to target now? Are you off to the weed lines? No, uh, we need to go and find some kohuru. Yeah. Or find right? some sand and try and get some goat fish or something. It doesn't feel like the island's getting any closer. Dig it in. Oh. Another consistently top performing team at the past nationals, Jackson Shields and Paul Best, seem to have had a productive morning too. Got a few. How's the fishing been? A few fish, but pretty dirty, nothing too good. <laughs> we tried. So we got a few fish there, we're just coming in to drive the sad now. Yeah. Maybe pick up some poor eye and who knows. Boys. What'd you get? Oh, hey. it's Herb. <laughs> nice one, Herb. Uh, Herb's got a, uh, a goat fish, also known as a red mullet. It's very hard to find one that will go competition weight, but by the look of the one that went in the plat, it'll be pretty close. It's got about an hour to go. There's still two or three uh, guys way in the far distance, and the current's starting to pick up. So they've got to get back to the, uh, the anchored boats. There you on, boys. Lots of regrets. Lots of regrets. Yeah. Have you missed opportunities? Look at this snail over here. <laughs> it's a long way back. Yeah. Go that way. It's got about an hour and eight minutes. You'll have to hammer it to get back. Mate, if you're eight, you're disqualified. So zero points for the day. Puts you on the back foot. <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> this is where when, uh, if you must burn, so it comes in uh, pretty handy. <laughs> Luckily for Sam and Zach, they've managed to battle their way back to the start zone before the allotted six hour time window was up. Once back on the boats, the competitors then set about the work of removing the guts and gills of their catch to keep them in good condition for eating. As a standard procedure of the Nationals is to auction off all the fish to benefit a local charity following the completion of the weigh-in. On quick inspection, there seems to be a few very full plats, especially those belonging to Dwayne and Jules, Jacko and Bestie, and Nat and James but it's not the total weight, but the number of species that will determine who sits where on the leaderboard after day one. How was the day, mate? Oh, long. Swam for ages. Poor visibility in cold water really makes you appreciate the good stuff. <laughs> Pink Mau Mau, Butterfish, Poor Eye, Blue Mau Mau and a Trevelli. Did you get all those? No. <laughs> That's a very, very, very big Poor Eye for up these ways, isn't it? Just put it down in the book, would you, that Poor Eye at 5.2? Okay, fellas, is that your catch? Okay, I ask you that because after I say that, you can't touch it. Okay, so we've got 409 grams. All the fish, they've got to be legal requirement, and they've got to weigh 450 grams without the guts and the gills in them. Kawai 2. The, the John Dory or the Zeus Japonicus, there won't be many of these weighed in today. Really, really good eating fish, but very, very hard to get. So it's got to be 25 centimetres long, it's 30 good fish. Trevally 2, 7.10. Plus 8. 15 point, you right? Yep, 15 point. Okay fellas, is this your catch? Okay, yep, yep. Team 35. Dwayne and Julian, number 16. Dwayne's reigning New Zealand champion. Hold that fish up Dwayne, that's, uh, how deep were you when you got that? 30 metres. Golden snapper, a really, really prized fish. Golden snapper, two. Blue Mau Mau, two. Butterfish, two. Pink Mau Mau, two. Trevally, two. Poor Eye, two. Kawai, two. Snapper, two. Kingfish, one. Total weight of 2415. 17 fish, fellas? Good catch, eh? Good catch. Good catch, Jules. Paul Best and Jackson Shields. Is your catch, fellas? Butterfish, two. Blue Mau Mau, two. Kawai, two. 
Trevally 2. It's very unusual fish here, a bastard red cod. They're a bastard, aren't they, Jacko? <laughs> yeah, so it's a bastard red cod. One. Pink Mau Mau, two. Red Scorpion, one. Snapper, one. Poor Eye, two. Kingfish, one. So my weight is 15.6 plus eight. 16 fish, great effort, fellas. <laughs> Matt and James, I go, fellas. Red Mullet, one. Golden Snapper, two. Blue Koheru, two. Blue Mau Mau, two. Trevally, two. Poor Eye, one. Butterfish, two. Pink Mau Mau, two. Snapper, one. Kawai, two. 14.85. 18, 18 fish. Uh, plus the eight is 22. It's the most species of the day so far. Oh, it was a good day fishing. There were lots of fish around. It's a good area, really good area. There was quite a lot of strategy involved with the tide, not knowing which way it was going to swing or which way you were going to be swimming into it or with it on the way back. Yeah, Nat did really well. He spent a lot of time up here. Me and Julian, it was our first time diving it. We just did it off the bat and, you know, just try to rely on our on our fish sense and hunting skills. So wasn't good enough to be honest. I'm Kieran from Garmin Marine Electronics. Uh, I've been connected to the spearfishing community here in New Zealand for as long as I can remember. In 2001 I won the nationals in Coromandel and I've competed in Inter-Pacifics and at the World Champs in Venezuela. The Spearfishing Nationals, it bounces from place to place around the country every year. Competitors will come from all over New Zealand and there is supposed to be this hometown advantage but the best guys will always rise to the top, Julian and Dwayne. They're from Coromandel and uh, down in Athol, which is down by Invercargill, so you can't really say that they've got any advantage from where they come from. Tell us where we are. We're in paradise. <laughs> All we gotta do is take a look around. There's hills everywhere. If you're into outdoors and running around the hills, couldn't think of a better place. Living in Athol, it's um, pretty far away. It's odd, everyone sort of gives you a bit of a, a weird look, but it's uh, practical for me because with my diving I'm sort of all over the Southland area, you know, Fjordland, right around the bottom, Stewart Island, then all the way up past Dunedin, so all that coastline is, is where I am trying to work. And you get home and you're away from it all, it's out of sight, out of mind, and you can concentrate on the family and going hunting. So, um, no, nah, if, if there's any pressure you're going to fail, so uh, we're just going to go and have fun again and, and uh, see if we can stay uh, stay up near the top somewhere. Put your business suit on. More swimming. More swimming. Lots and lots of swimming. Deciding which direction to head comes down to a few factors, such as how strong a swimmer you are, as it is much easier to fight the tide at the start of the day with fresh legs, especially on the second day of the comp. It also depends on your strategy, on which fish to target and when. It's no good just taking a let's see approach. Most competitors will have a set strategy of which areas to target and for how long before moving on. Where you're placed on the leaderboard is another decisive factor is a pace to stay alongside the other top pairs if you're in the running for the title. Conversely, if you're aiming to simply make progress up the table, then diving right alongside the top performing Spiros in the country probably doesn't make a lot of sense either. Much down there boys? Nah. Um, <laughs> pretty, pretty dead. Pretty dirty. <laughs> Early on, and it appears that quite a few teams are finding themselves battling poor visibility in the northern part of the competition zone. However, a few spearers are having success picking off species such as blue Mau Mau and Kawai that are present. I saw a massive blue Mau Mau. I think it's a beast. On days like these, it's especially important to take all your opportunities when they present themselves which means not fluffing any shots.
bottom time and the duration of each dive also becomes critical. As every additional second you spend underwater increases your chances of securing more points. But that's not to say you can't still have a bit of fun. Back over on the eastern edge of the area, as it did the day prior, the bait schools on the surface continue to pop up randomly throughout the day. But as yet, no teams have been able to nail the elusive game fish. See them jumping in front of us, we just can't see them in the water. Bit of buzz out here, boys. Uh, not bad. It's an optimist, eight meters. Oh, not good. many fish. Despite Dwayne's claim of there not being many fish, over the course of the morning, a variety of different fish species are seen being loaded into the plat. Awesome fish out here yesterday. We got Kawa and Trevelli, and uh, given the viz back the other way, I think we're best to come up here because there's so much bait fish and fish on the surface. And then we've got this whole end to ourselves. We can just fish through our way back to the boats through the day and hopefully pick up some other species. Ready for some mouth-to-mouth -mouth action. If you watch his lips, his lips go blue as when he's done a big dive. Yep. Yeah, boy. That's a big snapper. Oh no, it's poor right for the way down. There's a red mullet. Should go. The other teams seem to be ticking the boxes too, including Wiley veterans Gary Conway and Steve Crabtree. How you getting on boys? We won't be last. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to keep our cards close. Fair enough. Not our day today. On the other end of the scale, our old mates Sam and Zach <laughs> are finding the lack of current tricky. This spearfishing thing's pretty hard, eh? <laughs> what I've got to show you guys, oh, nothing think... really impressive. This one here is my nice fat granddaddy Harpooka. Yeah. Which is a nice little surprise, but uh, that's about the most exciting of the lot. <laughs> Shot, bro. Shit, yeah, jobs are good. See? Alright, let's go target some butters, eh? Well done, mate, well done. I've never been so happy to see a butterfish. You banned them, bro. <laughs> Check out the shot. <laughs> <laughs> but not a lot of water moving. No kawai, no trevs, no kingies. Probably dived like 100 meters of weed edge <laughs> on the um, northern side. Nothing. Yeah, barren. <laughs> don't fish about that big. Barren. On the flip side, at least they don't face the gut busting swim against the tide and the clock today. And with all pairs now safely back in the starting diamond, and time about to be called on a particularly tough day of spearfishing, it's now over to the Waymaster to determine which pair will take out the title for 2017. Judging by the poker faces of the top three teams, it really is anyone's Didn't guess. Pan out. Ah, a bit of hard work today. So this was all right in some places and shit in the other. But um, yeah, we got a, got just about all our basics and, um, and that, so see how the rest of the fleet goes. Pretty similar to yesterday. We thought we'd get a lot less but um, we did all right, I think. Just depends on how everybody else went. Yeah, it was fairly trying conditions out there, so we're happy with what we've got, given given we're sort of shivering on the surface and shivering on the bottom. <laughs> Back of the track. Yeah, this is on the first. Yeah, not too bad. Big swim today. We sort of swam to where we could find some clear water and hopefully there's some fish there. I think we might have, might have done all right. Dwayne uh, Herbert and Julian Hansford, they were uh, second yesterday, and when we score this, it should. Um, I say it's going to be very, very close, very, very interesting. Beautiful catch, these things here, beautiful fish, very hard to get big enough. It's called a red mullet, fantastic eating. These fish here, this is a pink mau mau, very, very deep. How are you deep, Dwayne? Yeah, 30 metres. 30 metres, Dwayne's doing on one breath to shoot this fish, it's just huge. Okay, fellas, red mullet, two. Poor eye, two. Snapper, two. 
Kingfish, one. Total weight for the boys, 17.15 plus eight. 17 fish? Good effort, fellas. Oh, we're just checking because if if you go below the minimum weight of uh, any species, you get you get that fish disqualified as well as a hundred point penalty. So we want to be really cautious about the weight of our fish because if they're below three eighty in this case, we're uh, get the fish taken off us. Is that your fish, bestie? Oh, yes, that's our fish. That's your catch. Blue Mau Mau two, Butterfish two, Blue Kohiru one. What did it need to be, Misty? We pretty much had to be 450. <laughs> so a little bit shy. Kawai two, Porai two, Snapper one, Kingfish one. 15 fish, fellas. Total weight 26.3 kilos. Great catch, everybody. Snapper one, Kingfish one, Blue Mau Mau one, Porai two. Trevally, two. 10 fish at 12.7. Nat and James yesterday had a 100% score. They won the day. Um, different day to day, Nat. Oh, yeah, it's a lot harder. Yeah. yeah. But to actually win one day in the New Zealand Spearfishing National is something uh, I've never heavy, done. So well done, fellas. But um, 12.75, eh? So after a slightly underwhelming day for Nat and James, the title is now down to between Dwayne and Jules and Jacko and Bestie. And after crunching the numbers, it seems that the engraver is going to be adding a rather familiar combination of names to the trophy once again. I believe seven times New Zealand champions together, and it should be worth noting that one year it's Julian Hansford, Dwayne Herbert, the next year it's Dwayne Herbert, Julian Hansford, and they just seem to swap it around. Come on, guys. So it was quite a tight comp in the end. Come down to only one fish, a couple of fish uh, between first and third. So the competition game is a lot different to going out and shooting fish. It's much more fun when you can go out on a boat, have a good time, not have to worry about that. You go somewhere in the blue water where there's big fish and there's no pressure, you know. When you don't have the pressure to deal with, you can have a good time. Speaking of the good times, make sure you keep an eye out for more spearfishing action to come in the next series of the Red Stag Timber Hunters Club, which sees Dwayne and Tim diving the bountiful waters of Fiordland Myself and Garmin's Kieran Andrews harvesting the tropical waters of the Great Barrier Reef. And both Tim and I join forces with Nat Davey on a mission to put a pin through a gargantuan Three Kings Kingfish. <laughs> Red Stag Timber, proud to have brought you this episode of the Red Stag Timber Hunters Club.